guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today I just want to do a quick shout out to Shadow Dragon for basically bringing this to my attention and out of all the times that I've replied to people I realized uh, that I was wrong and that uh, there you can use loot tables in procedures and shockingly um, with I would have known if it was uh, a thing until he pointed it out. I don't really follow the Minecraft commands and stuff as often as I probably should. Um, now, I've set up a little procedure here for the for when dirt is mined. It will basically call a command to be run to basically spawn a gem. Now, that's kind of through procedures, but it's actually completely through loot tables, so I'll show you how it all works. So we're going to break that. We didn't get anything from that one. Didn't get anything from that one. We'll just keep breaking it until we get something. So, we got some clay from that one. Got some iron from that one. Some more clay. Uh, more clay. Clay is actually really common. I made it common. And... I think some more. There's also flint, bones, grass blocks don't actually happen. We got some gold. That's a different loot that I added. So yeah, we as you can see, it can basically drop a whole bunch of stuff from a loot table that we've specified. So let's go into M Crater and I'll show you how that's basically set up as a procedure. It's really simple and straightforward to actually set up. So I'll cover the loot table as well. All right, so in here, what we have is we have a couple different uh, things that we have uh, set up. So um, the first one here is a loot table for discs. Now this happens, I'm, I can't remember how that happens, uh, when a pig dies. So when any pig dies, it's going to, by a creeper, what it's going to do is it's going to spawn a disc. Now this is basically what uh, I have set up for the when entity dies and basically what I'm doing is I'm testing if the uh, the event slash target entity the one that's dying is the pig and if it's killed by a source entity so the entity that's actually killing it which is going to be a creeper so if a creeper explodes kills the pig then it's going to uh, run a loot table for uh, that um, for basically dropping a disc. So how this basically works is it's going to use the loot command. Now for this particular block, before I go any further, you want to go under your world management and it should be right at the top here. It says execute command and then it has the X, Y, and Z. You don't really need to worry about the X, Y, and Z too much, um, but you do want to set up the thing. So I'll cover the commands as we go. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to remove this clear part. You're just going to type in without any slashes. Slashes are already included. Uh, you want to do loot. So L-O-O-T. And then you want to do spawn. And then you want uh, three curly... Um, I don't really what, know what to call them. They're like curly things. They're like that. That tells the um, relative location of where you're basically going to be spawning it. Now, the relative location is going to be located at the X, Y, and Z of this particular procedure being run. So you want to make sure that it's uh, that location. Now, the, there are spaces between these particular parts. So make sure that uh, you have like enough spaces pointed, uh, spaced out. After that, you want to space and then you want to do loot. And then you want your your namespace um, for your loot table. So if you're running it on your mod side, it's your mod namespace. If it is um, you're running on a Minecraft namespace and you want to run it on Minecraft, it's if it's through Forge, then you want to run it through Forge. Uh, depending on how where your uh, loot table is being run from, you're going to want to specify the namespace for that first. So in our case, uh, what I've used is the mod namespace. So I got on loot uh, tables, and then there's a colon after that. And at basically after that point, what we're doing is we're going to be getting the uh, loot table um, path for where it's located. Now, as you can see here, uh, it's under the loot tables for my namespace for my mod and then it's the colon and then it's basically block slash disk 
So if we go to the disk loot table, you can see right up here under the loot table registry name, it's blocks slash disk. So you want to make sure that this is the same uh, loot table that we're basically going to be adding into the command. So what we want to do is we want to do the exact same thing after the colon. So block slash disk. And then that will run the, the command from or run the loot table when it's actually when the pig dies. So again, loot tables are pretty straightforward. There are some extra features in here that you can set up, but um, I think I'm going to cover mostly um, a brand new tutorial on that because I know a little bit more about loot tables than I did way back in the day. But uh, in just what loot tables can do is it can allow you to uh, create um, basically custom drops, random drops and stuff like that. So if we wanted to say create more of the uh, things, what we're going to do is we're going to add a loot table. Now you can actually have multiple loot tables. Like I said, I'll cover that in another tutorial because it's it's needs its own tutorial for it to be done. And there were some things that I was wrong on before as well. So uh, the maximum rolls and the uh, pardon me, minimum rolls and maximum rolls, those are basically how often it will run, uh, like the chance that it will uh, basically run. Now, if you were to set this to minimum rolls to zero, then there's a chance that it will never run and there's a chance that it will run if it's set to one uh, if it's set to a higher number then it has a chance to run two times or more depending on how you set it up now because we have it just set to one and one we can actually run it every time so every time in one time so if we were to add a item uh, we'll basically go ahead and just grab another uh, disc for that so Way at the end here, we'll grab the, uh, I think this is the cat one, is it? Doesn't say, this is 13, so we'll grab 13. Now we can adjust the weight. The weight is actually really interesting. Um, so, like I said, I'll cover that in another tutorial, but the weight is uh, basically, the math behind it is your summary of your total weights. Uh, divided by the weight of the item. So if we were to have this at 100 and we added another one that was 50. So we'll just grab a green disc for that one and we'll set the weight for this to be 50. Then the sum of the weight is actually 150. So you want to divide that by the weight of the item. So I'm going to just use a calculator quick because I'm not that great with math. So 100 divided by 50 is 2. So that is the value that you're going to basically get your percentage from. Now what you want to do is remember that number. So in our case it's 2. And then what we want to do is we're going to go take 100 and then we're going to divide that by 2. And then that will give you your percentage of basically what the um, drop chance of it actually dropping for that particular item. So in our case, uh, the <laughs> drop chance for this one is 50%. Uh, this is 100% or um, I'm not sure how much. I think it's uh, let, let me just calculate the other one. So 150 divided by... 100 equals 1.5 so 100 divided by 1.5 is a 66 percent chance uh, it seems a little bit off I don't, I don't know but um i'll leave the math equation in the description so you guys can use it to calculate and stuff like that i'm not sure why that which is probably just because i went too fast at it and didn't take my time um, the other thing that you can do is maximum count and the, or minimum and maximum count. You can adjust how often it drops the amount. So the minimum could be one. We could drop up to three randomly. Uh, this one could be zero to three. So you could actually or zero to one. So, for example, if it were to run this particular line, then it would basically go, hey, and is it zero? Then nothing will drop anyways. If it is one, then it will uh, drop one item. And then you have your enchantment stuff down below, but 
Um, yeah, so basically that runs it. You want it on pretty much anything. I just left it on the default um, loot table type for block and it seemed to work just fine. So you can leave it on that. You can set it entity, whatever you really want and it, will, it should work uh, as expected. So yeah, that's basically it. And uh, for the other procedure for the um, the loot table for the dirt, uh, as you can see, I've basically created flint that was flint and clay are more common. Uh, the weight is higher for these two. And then bones are second common. Iron is the third common. And then gold is the rarest uh, item in the loot table. And I've also set the maximum count for these and the minimum count, as you can see. And the loot table for this one is block slash dirt loot. So same thing as we basically created our procedure. If we go open this one, as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm testing if the block is broken. And then I am going to get the uh, provided block state. So basically saying what block was just broken. I'm testing if it is equal to dirt zero. And if it is dirt zero, then basically I'm just running that same command that I covered earlier. And I'm spawning it at the relative chords for the center of the block. So I've offset it offsetted the 0 0.5 by a couple uh, by 0 0.5. So basically it will offset it off center it from the access point at the bottom northwest corner to the center of the block. So that's basically what's going on here. So yeah, that's about it. Um, it's really straightforward once you get the hang of it. I'll leave the command in the description so you guys can actually just copy and paste that in. You'll have to update a few things, but um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, also, thanks again to Shadow Dragon for pointing that out to me, and I will see you guys next time. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, it was a good tutorial. Peace out.